We are continuing to watch the markets here climb higher on the back of that hotter than expected February inflation print. Wall Street considering how the print impacts Fed rate cuts. To discuss what this means for investors, let's bring in Seth Wonder, Acorn CFO and CIO. Seth, you've always got a pretty good pulse on uh, what this means for everyday investors, kind of how they're looking at their portfolios with the expectation of how these rates could move. What are you seeing? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh I think the average investor today feels like they understand what's going on in, in the inflation and, and why the Fed has raised rates the way they have. And I think the general feeling that uh, a lot of the components of inflation now have normalized or leveled out over the last uh, six plus months, I think is giving people comfort that they can start taking risk again. They can start making uh, investment decisions that they feel good about. Uh, and we see positive trends in terms of consumers thinking about how to uh, plan and invest for their long term. So, Seth, where are you seeing the biggest inflows among retail investors right now? Yeah, so at Acorns, the way we set up the investment experience for our customers is that they really uh, invest in small increments over time. And so we teach them through uh, roundups or through recurring investments to constantly be investing in the market, uh, to take advantage of market dips, but also to plan for the future over the long term. And so, uh, so for us, uh, the inflows and customer appetite has been uh, fairly consistent. What's most important from our vantage point is really educating customers so that they understand why the markets have either dipped or rallied over time. Uh, and then in this situation specifically, what we've been explaining to them is that if you look back at the soft landing period from, let's say, 94, 95, uh, you've had you had at least at that time uh, four straight years of 30 percent plus compounded returns, which is well, well, well above market average. Uh, and it was really the idea that the Fed normalized inflation, held rates fairly consistent, actually, for a longer period of time. Uh, but because we were off for the worst of those fears, you saw multiples and economic growth really uh, compound. Uh, and so giving people that insight where uh, they may not have it is, is the key thing that we've been able to work with our customers about. Yeah, Seth, I'm curious, you know, um, given just the uncertain environment we have seen um, in the economy over the last few years, you know, we, we have been hearing anecdotally of so many people kind of putting cash on the sidelines here because of just how choppy the markets have been. Um, what are you seeing with everyday investors? I mean, you just talked about how you're advising them, but are you starting to see maybe some of your customers or clients sort of saying, you know, OK, I'm ready to sort of get back in the market um, because of a little more clarity on where things are headed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, we're we're seeing um, you know net inflows being quite strong, and so customers are reacting to uh, the economic backdrop. I think sitting on cash for the vast majority of, of people uh, doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about planning for your future. And I think our customers have, have done a good job of listening to the education that we've put into the market. I mean, if you look at the markets today, let, let's just step back for a second. You've got uh, a broadening of contributors to the S&P 500. Last year was a very tech heavy uh, contribution to winners. And now you're seeing a healthier market backdrop. You're seeing earnings growth uh, reaccelerate, which is super positive. Uh, you've seen uh, Fed rates actually hold, and obviously we're talking about when and if they may cut. But the reality is, is there's still really good yield out there for those who have um, uh, bond investments now that the the rate of of rate increases has normalized. And so, for a diversified investor across stocks and bonds, which the vast majority of our customers are, you've got a, a real return to opportunities put in front of them, and the the uh, opportunity cost of not investing when you've got a good backdrop. Is is significant, especially when we all know that time in the market is very difficult. You know, we teach people that time in the market is more important. And then the best part about the backdrop is the Fed now has flexibility. If the economy slows, they can lower rates, and if the economy stays where where it is currently, which is actually quite uh, you know reasonable or reasonably strong, actually, um, then they'll hold rates. Uh, and so we give uh, everyone that uh, perspective so they understand it, uh, and we're seeing customers respond to that. And Seth, in terms of you know time in the market versus trying to hop in and, and get on some of these trends, um, I see that Acorns is allocating up to 5% of investments um, towards a Bitcoin-linked ETF. Talk about that decision and how you're really guiding investors there. Yeah, so we introduced the Bitcoin um, uh, ETF to give them exposure to Bitcoin uh, a couple of years ago now at this point. And the, the nice way that we set it up was it's a part of their already diversified portfolio. So we've given them a sense of comfort and all the risk um, 
risk management associated with being able to make an investment without overwhelming their portfolio, which we thought was important for a particularly volatile asset. Uh, we also uh, continue to use the same framework I mentioned before, which is con uh, consistent uh, small contributions into their portfolio. So when Bitcoin went down a lot, uh, they really were able to take advantage of dollar cost averaging and, and being able to buy exposure into Bitcoin when spot Bitcoin was 25,000, 20,000, 17,000 even. Um, and, and now we see it's 70,000 plus. And so for those investors who opted into Bitcoin and who thought about um, uh, the proper way of thinking about portfolio construction and risk management and, and our educational backdrop uh, underlying all of that, I think they felt pretty comfortable staying with it. We've actually seen an incredible amount of stickiness amongst customers who have opted into uh, having Bitcoin in their portfolio. Uh, and then now, obviously, you know, you continue to see the benefits of that as, as the asset is, has risen. Uh, and then I'm sure you, know, you would imagine there's continued to be interest in, in adding that to their portfolios as well.